All right, everyone. Again, this is Frank Demore with part two for February the 24th of 2012. And I just finished uh, discussing what was going to happen, uh, what could happen as the gas prices in the United States go up. Obviously, it's going to destroy many of the businesses, especially the, the trucking business and the businesses in general, because everything is going to be affected uh, in the economy by uh, the transporting of goods and services uh, with the vehicles, including people that are commuting. So these are very trying times for a lot of the families, and I'm praying that the people will be turning to Christ uh, for their direction and uh, for their peace, because without Christ in these times, it's it's going to be really, really difficult. Now, one of the prophecies that Jesus gave to us was in Matthew 24, verse 7, where the Lord told us one of the things that he wanted us to watch for were these many signs. And in those many signs of Matthew 24, 7, we see the sign of many earthquakes. Now, what I do from time to time is I'll put up some of the earthquake news for the whole week and you'll see the many earthquakes that have happened just in the seven day period you can get this by going to the uh, the government site the usgs and you can pull this up and it's nothing i made up it's just here are the facts the different earthquakes for the last seven days now knowing that there was a, a swarm let me go to this site here and uh, you'll see that there was a uh, swarm of earthquakes, a moderate earthquakes. Let me pull this down for you so that you can get a better view of it as soon as it loads. Uh, it says, a, uh, <clears throat> obviously, there's a magnitude 4.4 earthquake where it rattled the summit of the uh, Kalua early this morning, continuing to swarm a small tremor shaking the region since Wednesday. The earthquake recorded at 3.53 a.m. was centered near the summit of Quayo, and the peace dispatch, the uh, HALO said, uh, she had not received any reports of damage. The USGS uh, geological Randy Baldwin said that since the earthquake struck the land, there was no tsunami danger. And uh, we're seeing a lot of, uh, when you take a look and you go into Google and put uh, earthquake swarms, you'll see that there's been a lot of these reportings lately not just in this area but in many areas and uh, one of the and the one of the reasons why I'm even giving you this information is that it's been relatively quiet as far as some of the the bigger earthquakes and uh, let me go back to my site because it didn't work there uh, but the Lord did tell us that you know, these things were going to happen. The last day signs were going to be happening as a woman with birth pangs. And uh, we, we also know from Luke 21, 11, that Jesus showed us and told us to watch for the great earthquakes. And so we know that these big earthquakes are going to come. We, they're in a lull right now, just like a woman who's in labor. The labor pains, as far as the huge quakes, have subsided. But I'm just warning everybody they haven't gone away and they're going to be coming up soon again because the Lord told us this is one of the warnings and since his warnings never fail, we should be on the watch for many earthquakes including the great earthquakes that will show up again. Now one of the warnings that I've, I've seen today, and here's the link for the article, when you go to my website you'll be able to click to the link. Uh, it says, warning of things, you know, this is what I wrote, but warning of things to come. Considering what Jesus said in Luke 21, 11, I would say that the scientists are reading or heading in the right direction on predicting the huge earthquake. And here they're talking about this, you know, they're looking for a massive earthquake that's coming. They'll give you all the information as to why they believe that this is going to happen. And uh, I just want to prepare people for eventuality of the word of the Lord because these things are coming to pass uh, very, very soon. And also, um, what I'd like to do is go into another prophecy. You see Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 through 39. 
And then again, you'll see it in Luke chapter 17, verses 25 through 30, where Jesus gives us a synapse about what this last generation is going to look like. And he essentially tells us it's going to look exactly like what Lot had to go through in that generation as he lived in Sodom and, Gom Sodom and Gomorrah, and then uh, in Noah's generation as well. And you'll see it here in the scriptures where Christ is talking about Noah's generation showing us that in the last generation who will see Jesus Christ will end up being a carbon copy of Noah's generation and Lot's generation. And I've been giving you lots of warnings showing you that this is the case. Now here is a video that I just put up uh, of a judge who is a, uh, she is not marrying people who are straight. And uh, obviously, <clears throat> she, when you read the articles, she is a uh, le lesbian judge and uh, she has taken upon herself not to, or to use her position, not to uh, marry people who are straight or heterosexual. And uh, this, in this, so you can watch this video for yourself. And this is, uh, this is something that pastors might think about because if a judge who is a lesbian judge can use her position when somebody comes and asks her to marry them and she says no and she uses the law to get around to skirt around uh, how you know she can decline people then I'm sure that there's going to be a court case opened up or they at least I believe that they could use this as a president to uh, for judges when gay people come up and ask the the judges to marry them and they refuse we have many many articles news reports saying that they're suing these people and they're forcing them to marry them and obviously if you have a lesbian judge who just arbitrarily is coming out and saying I'm not marrying and she'll use the law uh, to do this then the, something is majorly wrong with the law of the United States. How could you allow one one judge to be forced to marry somebody? Or, for example, go up to a priest or go up to a pastor or go up to a rabbi and uh, say, we want you, somebody who is gay or lesbian, telling the pastors or these other uh, men of God to marry them and they say no we can't do this because it's against our religion but then they sue them and uh, to force them to do this so you definitely have some lopsided uh, laws and of course this is all about spiritual warfare and attacks uh, on churches and on religious institutions who want to veer away from the gay uh, the gay rights and on in here here's some other information down below, you'll see you know, in my articles that I, <clears throat> I've written in the past, and you'll see my article right here where I warned you that the, you will see state after state that will be coming uh, in line with passing the gay rights marriage. And click that link, it'll show you what I warned. And today's news, <clears throat> here's another one. The issue of the same-sex marriage has been in the national spotlight during an election year. The bill that was legalized gay marriage in the U.S. Senate in Maryland has been approved in the state Senate less than a week after it passed in the House. So here you go. Here's another state. And uh, it just shows you that what Jesus warned us is actually taking place. The, our society is step by step moving in the direction of Sodom and Gomorrah and in Noah's generation where we have godless people and people who are choosing a lifestyle that is, is foreign or uh, against the will of the Lord God and written in his word, the Bible. Now, a lot of people can't accept this. Now, does that mean that we're to hate these people? Obviously not. The Lord Jesus Christ wants us to love everybody. So I'm telling people, you shouldn't, you should love these people as the Lord loves these people because we're, we, you know, Christ died for everybody and everybody, even when uh, people in the first coming, when Jesus hung up, hung up on the cross, he did it when the people were in sin. He did it knowing that they were in sin, but he laid his life down for these people. And Christ wants us to love these people 
and to but obviously point out his word and his word shows us that this is going to happen in the last days the society will turn again and uh, those people who are living in those societies should take uh, note of what he warned about because the same fate will end up happening to those who refuse the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, re Christ receive or refuse to receive his salvation and uh, anybody who partakes in actions like this uh, are obviously against God and their eternal salvation is in jeopardy because if they were to die today uh, they would end up on the road to hell and there's once you get there there's no way back and so we're definitely again on the road to fulfill scripture and by the way when you read this uh, when you read these verses here you'll find out that this was a major sign that Jesus Christ was about to return to earth and that's why it's so important to know what he said in these verses because it is a major sign that we are in the last days and the Lord is about to open the door to come back for his church who are following him. Now here's some other news that again has to do with the prophecy of Zechariah 12.3, a warning not to mess around uh, with Jerusalem. And of course the Bible prophecy in this case says that in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone. Obviously that has become a burdensome stone. The Jerusalem for all the people you see the news where the uh, there's a lot of stone throwing by the Muslims uh, against the uh, Christians and Jews who are going up on the Temple Mount and uh, so it says that all that burden themselves shall be cut into pieces though all the people of the earth are gathered against it and let me just go to this article and this is only a little bit this is the tip of the iceberg when you go to my book and you'll see all the documents that I put in my book as references and proof text that you'll understand how uh, we have reached a time where we are seeing Zechariah 12 3 come to pass Muslim worshipers Israeli police clash again Jerusalem's Temple Mount and we know that the Lord's words are coming to pass just like they're coming to pass when we're seeing the individual nations turning into homosexuality the marriage is there and condoning that uh, we see that again that this this Temple Mount area that the Lord warned us about that everybody was going to have problems with in the last days and everybody was going to be coming against Jerusalem in the last days. Uh, but here here's the major bottom line that I want people to understand. Uh, those who choose to go against Israel uh, and come against Jerusalem and come against Israel better read what the Lord had prophesied in Zechariah 12.3 again because it does say there that he was going to cut uh, into pieces anybody that came against Jerusalem or his people and he really means that so take it to heart these are only some of the signs of the last days now if you want a detailed list of all of the prophecies uh, including the Zechariah 12.3 and all of the other prophecies, just go to my book, uh, down the link or my website, download the book today for free, and you'll see all of the prophecies that I took out of the Bible and connected them with the current events. Everything that you're going to get at my site, by the way, is absolutely free. And if you can find somebody else that will do this, go there. But at least you'll have one vehicle or one mode of learning about the last days and hopefully that the Holy Spirit will speak through you and drive you to where you should have been in the first place, the Bible.